45 years ago this month, NASA landed astronauts on the moon for the first time in history. Hi everyone, I'm Ian O'Neill, space producer for Discovery News, and I'm here today with space historian and science writer Amy Shearer-Title. Hello everyone. We're here today to talk about the Apollo 11 moon landing, which happened 45 years ago this month, and I wanted to pick Amy's brains a bit about this historic mission. Yeah, so NASA has some very specific things they wanted to learn about the moon. That's why they sent astronauts there, right? Well, yes and no. We tend to think of Apollo 11, the first lunar landing mission, as a triumph for science. But really, Apollo 11 was a triumph for engineering. In other words, getting to the moon was more important than being on the moon. Every detail of the mission had been demonstrated on previous flights. Apollo 8 proved the guidance program and communication systems worked. Apollo 9 proved the command and service module and lunar modules were both up for the mission. And Apollo 10 ran through the entire lunar landing mission short of the actual landing. So Apollo 10 was just like a practice run where the astronauts orbited the moon and came back again without getting their spacesuits dirty. Right. So all that was left for Apollo 11 to do was actually touch down on the moon. Which was certainly not an easy task, so NASA focused on getting the crew down to the surface, then back home safely. Only once NASA gained confidence in this vital part of a lunar landing mission could the real science missions begin. So it turns out the Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin spacewalk was much shorter than you might think, and their surface operations were, well, pretty basic. When they landed at the moon's sea of tranquility, NASA decided to move their extravehicular activity, or EVA, up in the mission schedule. Just seven hours after they touched down on the surface, they opened the hatch and stepped outside. Once they popped the hatch, it took 36 minutes for both astronauts to hop down the ladder and step onto the lunar dirt. After making his one small step speech, Armstrong had to wait around for Aldrin to join him. So he took photos and collected some contingency samples of moon rocks. Yep, those were the samples they would have to bring back to Earth if something went wrong and they had to abort the mission and leave early. Really, most of a Apollo 11's surface activities were things you'd expect you'd have to do when making history. The astronauts unveiled and read the commemorative plaque on the lunar module's leg, they stuck the American flag in the ground, and then they spoke to President Nixon. So no science then, just planting flags and taking vacation snaps? Well, although they didn't do it all themselves, Neil and Buzz did leave behind a box of seismic equipment and laser ranging reflector. So they delivered the science but didn't actually do the science. Well, they actually did do a little bit of the science. One of Buzz's tasks was to evaluate the trajectory of regolith, which is a fancy way of saying he kicked around some lunar soil to see how it falls back to the ground. He also collected rocks and soil to be analyzed on Earth. The interesting thing for me is that NASA really played it safe with this first lunar landing. The astronauts never strayed more than 330 feet from the lunar module and moonwalked for just two and a half hours. They only stayed on the moon for 22 hours before heading back home. Right. Like the missions leading up to Apollo 11, the first moon landing was intended to work out all the kinks of landing and moving around on the moon's surface so that future missions could take better advantage of having humans on the moon in the name of science. So what do you think, Ian? Is it time we go back? Good question. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below and keep checking back here for more science videos every day of the week.